we're really excited to, to host Aaron Benson today uh, from Strata Funds. And, and my name's Chad Simon, I'll be moderating today. Um, Darren serves on our advisory board for the Huntsman School, <clears throat> and we're grateful for all of his, uh, you know, uh, his willingness to spend so much time advising us, but also helping our students. He, his firm recruits our students. I, I'm an accounting professor, and I know that our students uh, often recruit with, with Strata, and we're always grateful for that. Um, Darren is an Aggie through and through. He grad, both undergrad and master's at Utah State, uh, and, and it's always so fun to welcome him back. And and any of our alumni back uh, to interact with our students. And we're grateful for the, the technology that, that provides us with this opportunity during the summer. Hope our students are doing well um, and, and having a great summer as we prepare for another exciting fall, a unique fall for sure. But um, we're gonna use this power up time to, to hear from Darren. Um, and with that, uh, I'll just turn the time over to him. And if you'd like to submit questions on YouTube, those will be fed to me and I can ask Darren those uh, as we move along uh, once he's had a time to give some introductory uh, thoughts to us. So Darren, with that, turn it over to you. Absolutely, thank you, Dr. Simon. Um, excited to, to speak with you as students today. Um, just as, as Dr. Simon mentioned, my wife and I are both USU graduates. As he said, I graduated in accounting. My wife graduated with an English degree. We loved our college experiences up at Utah State. And because of those experiences, we love giving back to Utah State in any way we can. And so this is just one of the ways um, any way that we can help the faculty or the students to, to um, whatever we can do, um, we, we're excited to do it. <clears throat> Just to give you a little background maybe on me before we start, um, I am a found, I, I'm one of the founders and the partner of Strata Fund Solutions. We're an investment fund administrator. Um, our focus is on private equity funds, venture funds, and real estate. That's our core focus of, of the, the, the clients that we work with. Um, to give you a background on administration, and just in a real quick nutshell, um, our job is to basically keep the books and records for these funds. So we, we prepare the financial statements, we track all the investments, and we report to their investors to, to, so they know how they're doing with their investments. Um, our headquarters, uh, our office is in Salt Lake City. That's our largest office. We have over 200 employees, um, and we've significantly grown over the last several years. And and I, I sincerely, you know, as, as leaders of Strata, we attribute that to our employees. We have incredible employees that we've hired. And a lot of them come from Utah State. Um, incredible um, hires that um, have made us be very, very successful. So because of the crazy times we live in, like what we're going through right now, I, I think my thoughts kept going back of taking charge of your career um, as, a, as a subject to, to talk to the students today. I think in the past few years, it may have been a little easy to go out there and find jobs and, and tons of career opportunities just because of just all the opportunities that are out there with, with jobs. But with COVID-19 hitting and who knows what else, um, I'm not predicting any sort of doom to stay or anything. But I do think that, you know, we could have a contraction of, you know, of just the opportunities that are out there. And so um, as I think about maybe some of the experiences that I had in the past and some thoughts and decisions that I made, I thought that were pivotal in my career. I thought it'd be helpful maybe to share some to you if all of a sudden there may not be just so many opportunities, but to really help you focus on actively pursuing that career that you want. So maybe to kick it off, one of the first thing that I thought about is, I, I think you need to find what your um, passion is or your interest. And because I think if you can figure that out, and it doesn't mean you have to have exactly what you wanna be um, someday or whatever in 20 years from now, but you need to figure out what your interests are because I feel like if you feel it, figure that out, and many of you maybe just because of, you know, you're, you're in the business school, you already have a good idea. But I think once you figure out the direction you wanna go, that's a huge first step in your career. I know when I was at Utah State, um, I started off in electrical engineering and I, and which was a great field, but I think it was more of it sounded, you know, really exciting and great, but it wasn't like a passion of mine. I didn't have an interest in it. In fact, my wife always brings it up that when I was originally doing it, I was still, I love to read the Wall Street Journal. I think it was the investment business daily and I'd get the money magazine if we were at the grocery store, but all my thoughts in that were around business and around investing and, and just things like that. And so I remember before one, we were back on quarters then before a quarter started, I just all of a sudden thought, what, what am I doing? Like, and so I switched all my, dropped all my engineering classes and jumped into business and immediately I felt at home. 
And so that kind of spearheaded my career in a direction that I felt like has been very good because it's, 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 I feel like I'm much more passionate about um, the direction that I went once I made that decision. Now with your career, one of the things that I think are important is like it says it's your career, you know, take charge of your career. It is your career. You know, I think you, you can get tons of advice from a lot of good people. I think your parents are good to give advice. I'd say though, sometimes they may not have your best interests in mind. I think if we all followed our parents' interests, there'd probably be too many doctors in the world. But the point is, is they, they can have good advice. Your significant other, you know, my wife's had great advice for me. I think ultimately she even would have veto power if that were the case. But again, it needs to be your passion, your interest. And, and then the other thing is, is, you know, I always think from a, 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 a leader of a company is the company plays a big part or it should play a big part in your career. Um, and we should do everything we can to help you to, um, I know at our company, you know, our HR group is doing a great job creating these, I think they're called career development action plans to sit down with our people to figure out what types of careers they want, what things they need to do. And those things are really great for our people. But I guess my point is that ultimately, all of this is good to support you, but it really comes down to you sitting down and figuring out what you want to do. Um, and, and I think it's important too, when you're thinking of your career, that you look at it as a career and not a job. And I guess, you know, my definition of that is, is that a career is that passion or that interest. You're looking long-term at an occupation that you want to not just go in and punch a clock and leave and go home, but you want to go in and learn and grow in that. And so I think the attitude is, is huge when it comes to the out, ultimate outcome of, of, of where you want to go. Um, early on in Strata, I had an experience that I think kind of shows this of, um, of having this, this passion or this interest. So we had one small client when we launched and just right out of the gate, it was very, very small. But we got a, um, a referral from someone to go meet with a, it was a $20 billion asset manager, a very large manager in the Bay Area. And we were just young company, um, you know, a couple months old, um, hardly, you know, no track record or anything. But we flew to the Bay Area, went and met them, and we sat down with them, went through a lot of the things that um, we plan to do and things that um, you know, kind of our backgrounds and our, our um, bios. But towards the end, the CFO came in and he just shot off several questions and just wanted answers. But one of them I thought was really interesting is he said, okay, guys, let's say we give you this fund. And, at the, and, and it was one of their small funds. They had another administer, administrator administer the bulk of their work, but they wanted to give someone else a try to, to have a, like someone else in the mix. And this one small fund I remember at the time to them was a hundred and something million and to us we're like, oh my, that's like huge. And, but he, he said something to us, he says, let's say, you get in here, you, you, we give you the work, you guys continue to grow and you end up being very successful. Um, make lots of money, da, da, da. What do you wanna do with your life outside of this? And I remember my business partner and I at the time, we, we looked at each other and we were, and, and we were thinking about it and we're just like, well, we, and we truly mean this. I mean, it sounds a little bit cheesy, but we really said we are doing exactly what we wanna do. Like, we love this, our passion is this. Um, you know, we, we have family and we both, you know, love doing things with our family, but outside of this, um, this is what we want to do. And I think through that and then some other things, we actually walked out of there and, and landed this client, which is just incredible right out of the gate. And it kind of spearheaded a ton of growth at Strat over the years because, I mean, they're now one of our largest clients and because of their reputation just in the Bay Area and they have made it to where you know we've seen a, a huge amount of growth. And I think a lot of that has to do with too, is they saw our interest and our passion that we really did enjoy what we were doing. The other thing besides having, you know, figuring out what you wanna do is I think you, you should have a long-term perspective. And, and what I mean there is um, always be looking out, you know, even as a student, I'd say, look out where you wanna be a year from now, five years from now, and even 10. And it doesn't mean that that's where you're going to end up. Like my career changed. Like it, it, I, had, like I adjusted my career goals as it went along. But I think you have to have some goals out there of, and be thinking long term because I think in the short term you can lose sight if you don't have that long term vision. I mean, another experience I had in school that I can think of is um, I worked at an electronics store in, in Logan as I was going to school. And when I switched from engineering, as I mentioned, to accounting, I had no accounting experience at the time. 
and I wanted it. And a, actually a job came up with the space dynamics lab there at Utah State. Um, and it was on campus at the time. Um, but I remember it was doing inventory through the accounting department. I mean, it wasn't huge accounting exposure, but at the time I thought, well, this is what I need. And I actually remember taking, I took a pay cut to leave you know, I, I felt like I took a step back to go take this job, but the point was, is I wanted to have the experience. And, and then after having that job for a little while, I ended up going and working for a used car dealership as their accountant, like doing all of their bookkeeping. I remember it was in QuickBooks, but I did payroll. I did all the inventory on the cars and all the sales and everything. And, and all of that gave me an enormous um, background in accounting that supported the education that I received at Utah State. So I felt like, yeah, I probably took a step back in what I was making short term, but long term, I felt like it just really jump started my career once once I left Utah State. So I think anytime you can ex get experience in in whatever field you're going out in, even in school, I think it's hugely important to take that and don't look at short term for dollars or comfort. Um, I, there was a situation with one of our directors here. I was just talking to him the other week, and we brought up a situation to, with him. Um, a, a couple years ago, he had an opportunity to leave Strata and go work in, at a private equity company in a position that there wasn't much upward mobility. But at the time, it was going to pay him like, I think it, it was like over 20,000 more than he was making at Strata, which was a lot of money to someone at, in, at his point in his career. And I remember sitting down and talking to him and going um, kind of through basically laying out his opportunities here at Strata. But ultimately I felt like, you know, he made the decision that he saw the opportunities here versus there. We didn't offer him a dollar more. We couldn't just because of the structure we had. I mean, it caused other problems, but he ended up sticking here. I mean, now that's what we were talking about a couple of weeks ago. He's now a director. He oversees some just um, top clients of Strata, has a great team, um, very successful. And at the director level, they actually share in, um, um, the upside of strata, the, the profit of strategy here. And so anyways, I, I, to, in my mind, he didn't look at the short-term quick jump, but he looked at what the opportunities are out there and, and stuck around and he's seen a lot of success there. So my thoughts are, is think long-term, like don't get caught up in now, or there's a job here that's easier, but look and say, okay, um, where do I want to be down the road? Um, the other um, um, thing that I wanted to kind of point, I want to talk to you about is to Put yourself into positions of opportunity and I think that um, one of the things that you do there is you know I think people talk a lot about selling yourself and that's hugely important I think is you need to understand too that if you sell yourself whatever you're selling you need to make sure that um, you can deliver and so I think sometimes you you sell yourself you know sometimes it's like just being out there and letting people know um, who you are and what you want but part of it too is just having people notice how valuable you are without having to do that. And, you know, I look through my career and sometimes becoming valuable is a lot of hard work um, and it's a lot of stress. And sometimes it's, um, you know, days of just being in the weeds, you know, days and weeks and that and wondering, oh, is, is this really worth it? But as long as it's still, you're still progressing and learning and growing, I think um, it puts you into positions to where either the company you're with or where you plan to go. Um, you become very valuable. And we have something in our company that we've been talking to our, our people lately and it's, it's, and it's talking to, we talked to them about trying to step up to the next level. So whatever your position is, look and see what those skill sets and abilities and that that you need to have to the next level and, and try to emulate those or do those things that put you in a position and, and why I say that, and it might not be possible with every company, but it, it works well at Strata. And why I say that is, as a company in the past, um, we, we have what we call quarterly um, company town hall meetings. And this is where all the company gets together. The last one happened to be Zoom because you know we're, we're no longer able to all meet together in one group physically. But we go through and we talk about all the strategic initiatives of the company, how we're doing and things like that. But at, at the end, we take time to uh, have a Q&A, a questions and answer session, and people will anonymously submit questions prior to the meeting that we will also address. And we do it that way because sometimes they're more open if they know that we're not going to see the questions they submit. But one came in and it was really was a really good question. But the question was, is the person said, how can I become a manager early? 
and, and I'm just going to kind of par paraphrase this, but it was basically, how can I become a manager early? I saw that someone else was promoted early. And if I had known that you could, I would have done everything that I, you know, that I needed to do to put myself in that position. And, and that's a great question. In fact, from a company level, when we saw that, we thought, yeah, you know, when we go back to kind of career development in the company's role, we thought we do need to make sure that people are seeing um, if there are opportunities or things that they can do, that, that it's a clear path of what they're doing. But the flip side of that is kind of interesting. Um, the person that was made a manager, the backstory of that is, is it, it, this last year end, um, I saw that the director was wanting to promote this person to manager. And I always kind of felt the same way as this person that submitted the question. I'm like, there, there's no way we can promote this person to manager. And I went into this meeting with the director. Basically, I, I came in to say no. And and was ready to fight to say no even because I didn't want to you know create other potential issues of promoting someone early. But when I sat down with this director, he walked through everything this person was doing, all the, the clients of ours that he was overseeing, the director had to have very over, little oversight, the quality of the work, the way he led his team and how he continued to build out his team. And I sat there and I looked at this and I couldn't argue with the director. I mean, I, I, I wanted to, believe me, I, I did. And I looked at him like, he is already a manager. So it's not fair to him that we don't promote him to that manager level. So that's what we did. So going back, I would say, put yourself in those positions, start doing those things that if whatever your career, um, whatever career you want, start trying to emulate those you know, skills and attributes that you can to, to, to be able to, to make it very easy for a company or another, you know, whoever that you're seeking employment to see those and say, yeah, that's, they're there. So I, I think that's been, that's been a good one um, that, that has helped even me. Um, I, I, maybe I'll come back to this at the end, but I was gonna tell you another experience, but maybe I'll come back to that at the end. But um, the other thing besides becoming invaluable or valuable is to um, actively seek career advice. And part of that, which is the tough side, is be willing to take constructive feedback. And that can be tough. Um, but I would say, you know, we talk about mentors and I feel like they're huge and they've been hugely important in my career. But it's like, um, you should be able to seek out mentors. And, you know, if you're in school, I would say seek out, if, you're, if there's an employer there that you're working with, any of the professors um, in the business school get their input. I know I did when I was there. Um, even people that are out there in the, in, in the in, wherever they've, industry or something that you're wanting to go reach out and talk to them. But I, my thoughts are is once you're with a company, I think you, I would say you have a right to lay out what you want. And, and, and what I mean is going back to your career development, it doesn't mean to go in and give ultimatums to the company because that doesn't work most of the time, but it is good to go in and say, okay, this is what I want to do with my career. Tell me what I can do to, to help get there. And then the hardest part is say, to, you know, give me, you know, give me some feedback. What can I do to, to better? Because every one of us has, you know, things that we can work on. And I think that the worst thing that, you know, you can do or a leader can do is not give that feedback to help them and help you improve in those areas. And so my thoughts are, is if you're defensive, that person that supervises you or something may be hesitant in the future to give that feedback. So take it even if you agree or not, but try to figure out ways to improve and work on it. And I think that would go a long, you know, long ways. Um, the, the other thing along with, you know, actively seeking career advice is at least at Strata, and I think most companies would be this way. As I mentioned, we have 200 and something employees. Um, as, as partners, our schedules are very, very busy um, or packed most days, but I will say this, we've never turned down someone, even a new um, hire, if they want to sit down and talk to us. And, and we've had that. I had that in a couple of weeks ago. I had a, a, a person that's been here just within you know less than a year that wanted to talk to me. And it was on his like just this thing, this whole thing of his career. And I didn't know what it was about. I reached out to the, the manager to see if he had an idea and he didn't, but you know, to get some um, see if there's anything I needed to prepare for. But I reached out, and I said, hey, I'm really busy this week, but but, but next week's better. But if you really need to speak this week. I, I'll make time. And he's like, I really want to speak this week. I'm like, I'll make time. So I did. It ended up being as with just his edu his advanced education, what direction he goes with, you know, working for a company like Strata, what would be most important. And so, you know, same thing met with the manager this week. 
And basically the manager sat down with me, had a good discussion. It's like, I don't want to be doing the same thing I'm doing now in 10 years. And it totally makes sense. And I guess my point being is when I talk about actively seeking career advice is I think it's important to um, take the time to, to make the effort to go talk to um, those that are over you, or even like I said, company um, that, you know, the owners like we are to, I, I don't, I think there'd be very few unless there's thousands of employees and they just can't do it, that wouldn't sit down with their employees um, and take that time. And so these are kind of the main things um, I wanted to talk to you about taking charge of your career. Um, I don't know, Dr. Simon, I'm happy that I know you and I talked about a few other things that I could talk about my experiences with. Um, with yeah, let's, uh, if, if it's all right, Darren, we've had a couple of questions come in from yeah. the students and I'd obviously prefer that you get to those first. I, I, I'm interested in a couple of topics as well, but um, the first one is um, how, how do you choose which opportunities to take? What factors do you consider when you make a shift or a change? And this does kind of play in with what you and I were discussing before uh, the presentation began with, you know, even beginning your own firm, that was a pretty major shift. So what are some factors that go into, into making the change or, or making a shift in your life? Absolutely. So, you know, and, and that's a very good question. In fact, I could tell you maybe what, how Strata came about. So um, I've had great, I feel like I've been fortunate with the companies that I've looked, worked with in the past. I've had tons of um, great opportunities. Um, you know, I worked for another administrator years ago and it was a great company to work for. I, here's my feeling is it's like, I'm one that probably, I, I don't, I don't go on a lot of emotions. For, I don't make decisions, I should say, by just emotion. In fact, if there's something, if I'm upset or if there's something that I really want, I take a, take a step back, wait, set on something before I do it. And I, I've definitely done that in my career. So I haven't let, I've been in situations before where um, maybe there's times I'm like, oh, I'd like to get out of here or whatever, but I will work through it and would never leave in that type of feeling because I think it's the wrong state of mind to do it. So I'd say, number one, don't ever leave out of just like anger or something. Make sure you work through it and make sure that they're real issues if you're at somewhere and you feel like that that's not the right opportunity. But at the company that I was at, it just got to the point to where, like I said, I loved it. I, I advanced to a certain level, but I guess there was a part of me that looked at it and wanted to do more. And all of a sudden I looked at it and I thought, um, I'm going to leave here for another opportunity. Um, to It was more on... Uh, uh, to expand my, I, I guess what I'd say is that my career is as far as being able to do things. And I don't know how else to say it. I'm trying to be, you know, I, I don't want to say too much, but it's, it's almost like I felt like this company had gone to a place where I didn't know how much, where it would go. And I wanted more. That's why I guess I, so I thought, you know, it's been great, but I'm, wa I'm wanting to do more. I have all these ideas. You know, if, you, if you're not the owner of the company, most of the time you have direction, but you ultimately can't lead it. And so my thoughts were, as, I think as soon as you figure out that your career isn't taking you where you want it to go at the current company, I think that's a way that you can look at it. But again, it's not on emotion. I, I spent tons of time thinking about it. Um, and it's not always easy. I, I think, Dr. Simon, I mean, maybe I can go into this. I, that, I don't know if that answers it. I would say it goes back to thinking long term. Like, Again, I, I've, take, I've stepped away from companies and taken huge pay, pay cuts to go to the next opportunity, knowing that um, where I ultimately wanted to go, that was going to be the best place to take me there. Um, so I don't know if that's helpful. No, that is helpful. I love that long-term perspective. I think, um, mm -hmm. and I'm one who probably acts too much on emotion at times. And so I'm, <laughs> I'm grateful to hear that insight personally. And I hope the yeah. students appreciate it as well. Um, Another one, and, and very timely, um, how has the pandemic affected, you know, Strata, your business, and what changes have you been able to make to, to adapt and to be successful in this new environment, whether it be a kind of a short term or a long term? You know, that's a great question. So I think, as you mentioned, as you can see, I, I, I'm working from home right now. Um, we were very prepared um, for something just like this. So um, it's interesting. We're like, we always say we're fortunate in the industry that we work in, but we work with some large financial institutions in the US and by working with them, we have to have certain things in place from, from like just a systems perspective. And so we call them business continuity plans or um, disaster plans to where we have to have backups. If something happened and we can't be in the office, we have to prove that we have the ability to work anywhere. 
And so fortunately for us, we already had that in place. We've already tested it. You know, our servers, you know, what, whatever's in Salt Lake City immediately can be switched over to these other data centers and everything's just, it is, it's just pointing the IP to or whatever, to a different direction. And we're still completely on all our data, all of our systems and that. So from home here, it's just like I'm working in my office um, just by flipping a few switches from our IT side. So as far as for Strata working from home, from a technical side, it's worked very, very well. Um, even from a, a, a business perspective of getting work done, it's really interesting. As it, we were very nervous going, okay, are we going to get all of our client work done? If people are working from home, how do you know if they're efficient? You know, and, and how are they going to communicate with teams or whatever? We've been very, very surprised at how good it has gone. It has gone very, very well. Um, in fact, um, we're, we're going to... I, we don't know to what extent, but we're going to allow some sort of remote working for employees to a certain extent. We still will for sure want office touch. I think it's really hard to have culture and it's really hard to train new people remotely. I think we're, we see that that's more difficult to do, but as far as for you know efficiencies and things like that, it's been great. And that's awesome insight. Um, I wanna go back to two points that you raised um, during your conversation. One was the readings that you were doing back when you were in school and that you realized you wanted to shift over to business. Um, what, what, are some, um, what, what are some recommendations you have for websites or, or other uh, news sources that you would recommend to our students that they get involved with now so they can set that kind of that uh, pattern in their own lives, that habit in their own lives of going to reputable sources? Um, what, what would you recommend on that front? I, you mentioned the Wall Street Journal specifically, but yeah, any so others? Wall Street is one that absolutely. I think from the business world and many perspectives, very good articles in, in that. I think it's, here, I got it on my phone here. I think it's Business Insider is one of them. Let's see here that I like. Yeah, Business Insider is one that I subscribe to. I think it has a lot of breaking um, news in that on, on just the, the business world. That's one that I, I, I constantly look at too. Um, and then, yeah, I probably scan the news just in general way too much, but um, those would probably be the core ones that I look at. Awesome. Um, one other topic we're, we're, we're always, um, you know, trying to improve here at the Huntsman School of Business is just the general culture and attitude of our students. And, and you, you were talking specifically about attitude. Um, how do you, how do you kind of see early on when maybe a newer hire or newer, newer associate needs uh, need some help in this area. How do you go about helping that individual? You, you spoke to this before about receiving critical feedback effectively, uh, but how do you notice it from your side and what do you do about it when, when you do see it? Yeah, so, so I mean, first off, we have a great HR group here um, at Strata. And so, you know, between them and then the team that whatever these employees work on, the directors or the managers on those teams are very good at, at addressing things like that. But I, I think the thing is, is, yeah, I mean, Attitude will hold you back as much as technical ability. I mean, it really will. And so the, the thought is, is I think early on, I go back to, again, like, yeah, the, the company, need, you know, if you're working with needs to let you know if there's an issue and then you need to be willing to address it. I, I mean, that's, that's the thing that's hard is I think some people aren't willing to see that. But we, the point, here's what we try to say. I think we're all nice people at Strata. I really do, like and maybe too nice at times, but at the same time, I would say that we're very honest too. And so we, like for the betterment for you and for the company, it's better to put it out on the table instead of behind your back, say this person is lacking da da da. And so I think as a whole, we try to be very open and upfront of anything that they're gonna fall short on. At least that's what I try to do. Yeah, I've, I've sure appreciated that here, and even in my own career, I uh, appreciate the opportunity to receive that feedback um, from people who are providing it. Um, maybe last topic, I think we're running a little short on time, but could you just speak, we, I mentioned this to you previously, but uh, just to the, the benefit you see of, of being in a market like New York uh, for, for someone who kind of went to Utah State, undergrad and master's to uh, just how your eyes were opened by going to that, that you know, largest of all markets there. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, and I'll, I'll be quick because, because I know we're out of time, time, but when I was at Utah State, I never dreamt that. I mean, my, again, my long-term goals were very simple um, and it was to basically be, you know, stay here local. I never dreamt that I would spend so much time in New York and, and San Francisco, but because of some past work that I've had, you know, I still own Dr. Simon. I've spent outside of, you know, my home here in Utah, by far the most time in New York. 
um, incredible places to be, you know, I mean, so I think I mentioned, like, or maybe I didn't, maybe it was to you, Dr. Simon, but the bulk of our clients are in New York and San Francisco. There is so much um, opportunity there. I'd say, especially when you're younger, um, there's so much to, to, to take advantage of in those markets. So I, my thoughts are, is it really opened my eyes up and it really gave me a huger vision of what we could do even at Strata. You know, it's, it gave me like, I think I grew up with this vision of just right here local and all of a sudden it opened my eyes up to saying, oh, there's so much, so many more opportunities out there um, from client perspective, from a business perspective, everything. So it, it was, it was very, very eye open. I wish I had more time maybe to go into it, but it's, it's, it was a great experience. Well, Darren, I, we can't thank you enough for, for your time. We know your time is valuable and, and really invaluable to our students, that the advice you've given. I'd encourage all of our students to go back and watch this from time to time. Uh, this will be recorded and put up on YouTube. Um, and, and again, when you hear advice like this, it might be more time leaving a little bit later on in your life when you're going through different experiences. So please pull this up again. And Darren, thank you so much for your time. Uh, and please come back to, get, to Logan again soon. Absolutely. And, you know, if anybody wants to reach out to me, any of the students, again, I might not be res quickly responsive, but I, I, I'm more than happy to give them any, you know, any of kind of my thoughts or feelings around this, but happy to do it. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much.